In this tutorial, we'll take a look at graphing polynomial functions that are given in a factored form. And when you have a factored form, it looks something like this. f of x, or whatever the name of the function is, is equal to, and there could be a constant out front. There doesn't have to be. That's what a refers to. Uh, and I've given three factors here, x minus p, x minus q, x minus r. There could be less. There could only be a couple of factors, or even one. Or there could be more. And to uh, one of the uh, most important things to find here are, and because it's given in factored form, this, this part isn't too bad, the factoring's already been done for you. To find the roots or the x-intercepts, uh, we set each of those factors to zero. So we would set the uh, x minus p to zero, the x minus q, and the x minus r as well. Now when we go to solve x minus p equals 0, so we're solving for isolating x, so we would add p to both sides, or some people say take the p over and it uh, switches to a positive, so x would be equal to p. In this one we would get x equals q, and in this one we would x equals r. So the roots are the numbers p, q, and r. So if this is given in a factored form, it's always x minus the number, and that, that number is the root. So x minus p, the root's p. x minus q, the root's q. Now, if it happened to be an x plus, then you could think of that as x minus a negative number, so the root would be some negative value. And we'll get into all that in a couple of examples in the next two pages. Uh, this page is just an overview, and we'll get into specific examples uh, on the next two pages. The, and it's called the multiplicity of the x-intercepts, refers to the uh, powers in each of the factors and what that means about how the function just either touches the x-axis or crosses it, and we'll get into that in some examples. So, for well, for uh, just an example here, not a, uh, a visual example. Uh, for example, let's say we had this function, and notice I've taken the x minus q uh, factor and put a power of 2 on it, and the x minus r a power of 3. Otherwise, it would be the same as what's above. The x minus q squared, the power of 2, means that the graph just comes down and touches the x-axis, so it kind of dips down and touches, or perhaps it's coming up and it just touches, but it doesn't actually cross. The uh, x minus r cubed factor means it crosses, uh, kind of looking something like a cubic function, and again we'll get into that one specifically in the, in the second example. The y-intercept occurs for any function wherever x is 0. So if we put 0 in place of x, whatever f of 0 works out to be, that's the y-coordinate. So that number would be what's called the y-intercept. Uh, local maximum points or minimum points are places where the function changes from either increasing to decreasing or the, or the opposite. And a lot of people call them hills or valleys. Uh, and again, we'll see some of those in the examples. So, first example, it says sketch the function f of x equals 2x, x minus 3 times x plus 4. So now there's actually three different factors here, the x, or the 2x, and the x minus 3 and the x plus 4. So to find the, uh, the roots, again, we would set each of those factors to 0. Now you can either set 2x equal to 0 or just x equal to 0. That will actually give you the same value. And that's because if we divide both sides by 2 here, you still get x equals 0. So x equals 0 is one root, uh, x equals 3 would be another, and uh, this is what I was talking about in the previous page, if it happened to be an x plus, uh, in order to solve for x here, we would take when we take the 4 over the sign changes, or we could subtract 4 to both sides, from both sides, and we get x equals negative 4. So the x-intercepts are at negative 4, 3, and 0. So on the uh, graph, we will put our, a dot at negative 4, one at 0 and one at 3. Those are the places where the function either touches or crosses the x-axis. In fact, because all these are the power of 1, they're all a crossing. They're not just a, a touching. In order to find the y-intercept, we put 0 in place of x. So 2 times 0 times 0 minus 3 times 0 plus 4. Now 2 times 0 is 0. This would be negative 3 and 0 plus 4 is 4. If we multiply 0, negative 3, and 4, we get 0. So f of 0 is 0. So this point right here, this x-intercept of 0, is also the y-intercept. Now, this is the general shape of this graph because there are, th if we were to expand this out, there's an x times an x times an x. So the highest power of x would be x to the power of 3. And that's the general shape of a cubic function. It can have uh, a maximum and a minimum. It could be so stretched that you don't see that max and min. 
that's possible but that's sort of the general shape of a cubic graph so that's the general shape we should be expecting here now because of this the end behavior goes from this would be where the third quadrant where it starts to the first quadrant where it ends so the end behavior it goes from quadrant three to quadrant one and that's the general uh, shape of a cubic function so it starts somewhere down here and ends in the uh, uh, off the first quadrant so when we're going to draft this so draft this draw this um, since it starts in the third quadrant it must come up here and cross the uh, x-axis at negative four and go up some height and then come down and cross the x-axis at this zero zero point and then do have some kind of a minimum here and then come and cross this and continue merrily on its way up into the first quadrant. So it would look something like this. Now the um, the idea behind this course isn't to specifically find exactly how high that maximum point is, exactly how low that minimum point is. If you want to know uh, a fairly easy way to do it is just substitute some values in for x. So for example, substitute numbers like negative 3 or negative 2 or negative 1 in. And you can find out very specifically where those points are and graph it fairly accurately. I'm not going to bother do that here, but uh, this is what a, uh, a graph and calculator screenshot would look like, which is pretty close to what that, that graph looks like there. Now, this stretch factor in front, the 2, it will change how high this maximum goes or how low this minimum goes. For example, if I made that number larger, like let's say I made it a 5 or a 10, then what we would find is that this maximum is quite a bit higher and this minimum is quite a bit lower because it basically stretches the graph vertically. But that's the general idea. That, that's what the general shape of this graph would look like. Okay, one more example. Uh, number 2 says sketch the function f of x equals negative x minus 1 squared times x minus 2 times x plus 2 cubed. So notice I've put a couple of uh, powers on uh, a couple of these factors. And uh, so uh, one of the main things I want to show you in this example is what that does to the graph. So the roots would be, and we could set each of these factors to 0. Uh, one root would be at 1, because x minus 1 is a factor here. And because of the power of 2, that's called a double root. And again, I'll show you what that means in the graph. We have a single x minus 2 here, so 2 would be a uh, root as well. And uh, this would give you negative 2, and that's a triple root because of the power of 3 here. Again, uh, um, the names double and triple come from the exponent. So if this was a 5, I guess we would call it a, um, a quintuple root. I don't know if that word really has a meaning here, but it's a power 5 anyway. So we'll put dots on the x-axis at uh, negative 2 here, at positive 2 here, and then of course at 1 right here. Now in order to find the y-intercept, and of course notice that the x-intercept is not 0, so the y-intercept will not be 0, we would just put 0 in place of x, so it would be negative uh, 0 minus 1 squared times 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 2 cubed. And so this is negative 1, this is negative 2, and this is 2. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 2, and then this would be 8. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And that multiplies to 16. So f of 0 is 16. So up here at 16, that's where the graph crosses the y-axis. Now, what's the degree of this polynomial? Well, x cubed, so it's power 3, and another one makes the power 4, and then two more makes the power of 6. So it's a sixth-order polynomial function. Now a six, so it's even, and uh, a sixth-order polynomial function would look something like this. Sixth order means it has five turns, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Well, you can see at most five terms in a sixth order. Now, this negative here, now that's a positive uh, sixth order polynomial. This negative reflects it in the x-axis, so instead of looking like this, it would actually just be an upside down version of that. So the end behavior, it must start in the second quadrant, sorry, third quadrant that would be down here, and end in the fourth quadrant. So that's the end behavior. It goes from quadrant three down here to quadrant four down here. Now, the, let's work across the graph here. The negative 2 is the triple root. So it does like a cubic function, and sometimes it might even be hard to see. Sometimes it might actually look straight. Uh, it does like a cubic function here, so it kind of turns like a cubic function. It actually does cross there. 
and of course it has to come up and go through this and then at one, one's a double root. So when it comes down here to touch, it just touches at one and then goes back up. So there's actually a local minimum there. And then it, it after that, after just touching at one, it must have a local maximum, and then it crosses at two because two is just a normal root, just crosses there. So the function would look something like this. Here's that sort of cubic shape here. Okay, there must be a local maximum here between this root and this root just touches at one because one's a double root it goes up a ways has a some kind of a maximum there and then comes down and crosses at the two this is a, a graph and calculator screenshot of what it looks like now to find out where those maximum as I said the goal of this particular course isn't to find those specifically um, they'll they occur between places where uh, you have um, uh, intercepts for example uh, unless of course it touches. So for example between these two if I know it's coming down and just touching here and it has to cross there as well then I know there has to be a maximum between those somewhere. So and it doesn't necessarily mean it's exactly in the middle between 1 and 2. It doesn't have to be exactly at 1.5. 1.5 will be reasonably close to where that maximum occurs for an x value but it doesn't have to be right exactly in the middle. But that's an, that's the general idea behind them. And that's the end of the tutorial.